Thank you very much. So very similar to TB, fungal um, pathogens are very difficult to diagnose because it has very thick cell wall, very difficult to culture. Um, it takes a long time to culture and very difficult to extract nucleic acid out of it. Um, and so it's been a real challenge. For, for fungal infections, obviously, there's a lot of innovation, but we're here at the HIV meeting, so I'm going to focus on diagnostic innovation for HIV-associated mycosis. So the challenges are, you know, crypto, meningitis, histo, and telomycosis are leading cause of HIV-associated death. Very high mortality, even with therapy, 20 to 40 percent. And culture diagnosis is very long and have low yield. Uh, for example, histoplasmosis takes six weeks to culture. So by the time you culture something out, the patients already die if they have disseminated infections. Histoantigens are not yet widely available outside of North America. And so even though histo is worldwide distributed, antigen test has not been available. So as you hear, there's a lot of um, neglect going on, particularly in fungal infection in patients with advanced HIV disease. Tyromycosis, which is highly endemic in our regions, and we're, um, we're very special that way. Uh, it takes four weeks to culture sometime. Um, and antigens, PCR, host bay tests are in development, and today I'm, I hope to focus on, um, on those. So why are we still seeing fungal and opportunistic infections? It's because the, the light yellow color, and I don't have a... Um, pointer. Is it the green? Middle the middle button. Oh, how beautiful. So, as you can see, this light color represents the gap in achieving the 95, 95, 95 by the end of 2020 20 by the UN8. This is data for our region, and that's compared to Sub-Saharan Africa. So we are doing much worse in terms of reaching that goal. So about only 55% of people are biologically suppressed, 60% are really on therapy. And if you look at this graph, again published by UN8 data in 2020, the light yellow represent the prevalence of people with advanced HIV disease. In other words, CD4 count less than 200 at early, at first diagnosis. And look at these country, right? I'm gonna help you out because it's difficult to see. Um, so the country that had greater than 50% prevalence of advanced HIV disease are Indonesia, Philippines, Papua New Guinea, Thailand, and Vietnam. And so Thailand and Vietnam has been, you know, access ARV has been going on for a long time. Not like Philippines, but you can still see significant advanced HIV in Thailand and Vietnam down here, 50%. And uh, actually, the incidence actually is worse because this data looking at uh, 2017 to 2019, and if it's red, if you look at red color, a country that actually trending up, not trending down. So that includes Afghanistan, China, Indonesia, Laos, Malaysia, Philippines, Sri Lanka, Thailand. I mean, look at that. We're going the wrong direction in terms of prevalence of advanced HIV disease. And this graph has been shown by Dr. Dat yesterday to show you that we have actually slowed down on our progress, you know, progress, sorry, um, of reducing incidence of HIV. You know, the first decade, we're doing well, about 35% reduction in incidence. And over the last 10 years, it's down to, to 14%. Same thing with, with death. So in our region, Southeast Asia, about 200,000 deaths per year. And a lot of these deaths are due to TB and fungal infection. So the WHO just came out with the fungal priority pathogen list in 2022, really tried to copy the success of the fungal, sorry, of the WHO bacterial priority pathogen list, because that has really stimulated discussions about antimicrobial resistant, 
uh, research and development of more diagnostic acera for bacterial pathogen, and now they come up with 19 fungal pathogen and our pathogen, the HIV-associated pathogen, are up here. So you got cryptococcal, cryptococcus in the critical group, histoplasma in the medium, in high priority group, sorry, and telomycosis in the medium priority group because it's regional specific. So telomycosis, which I'm going to focus on because crypto is kind of being solved. We got an antigen test. It's easily grow. You can make a diagnosis readily, and, and it's available widely. Histoantigen, there's an issue, but histoantigen performance has been sort of validated and now recommended as a first-line therapy, but not telomyces diagnostic. So where are we? In terms of telomycosis, this is the uh, burden of disease here, and we got uh, 25,000 cases published in the literature in 33 countries to date. 90% are HIV infected, predominantly are male. There's some children as young as, you know, later infant uh, can get it from mother uh, to child transmission. And this prevalence of male really um, reflects the HIV epidemic. China, Thailand, and Vietnam are the major, the highest burden of telomycosis. And we estimate about 17,000 and 5,000 deaths per year. And that is based on culture positive alone, and there's rising incidence and expanding geography. HIV is a major driver of telomycosis, as you can see the epidemic curve here. Um, you'll see this very nice temporal relationship between HIV and telomycosis in Thailand, in Vietnam, sorry, in Vietnam and in southern China. And as you notice, southern China, the epidemic curve still going up in terms of both incidence of AIDS and telomycosis. So at this uh, number eight Guangzhou hospital alone, there's 250 cases of telomycosis per year at the end of 2017, and the numbers are still going up. And uh, if you look at this uh, graph from Guangxi province, which is another huge province, highly endemic for HIV in southern China, telomycosis in blue um, uh, is the Kaplan-Meier curve of death due to telomycosis compared to other causes. And mortality is up to 50% uh, despite antifungal therapy. So telomycosis present, you get it through inhaling the spore from the environment. You can develop lung infection, but we never know because we don't have a diagnostic. Patient can develop local infections. In non-HIV, they have a lot of upper and respiratory infections, and in the bone particularly, and then in very profoundly immunosuppressed patients with advanced HIV disease, they develop disseminated disease involving multiple organ system. Um, so the issue is that we only detect disease at the very late stage. So if you look at this, we only detect disease here um, at this late stage, but nothing over here because we don't even have diagnostic for them. And so the challenge are that patient can come to the hospital multiple time over six month time, and we culture them up and down and nothing's positive until they develop these severe skin lesions. You can do a quick diagnosis by doing a little skin smear and look under the microscope and you can see these years, very typical, but by the time they develop skin lesion, it's already disseminated. Culture take up to 28 days and mortality double from 25 to 50% with late diagnosis. So we are here. We're still here. After decades, we still rely on decades old microscopy and culture to make diagnosis of telomycosis. What we need to is moving toward the right with genome detection, antigen detection, and even take advantage of host-based detection, antibody, interferon gamma assay like TB, host transcriptomic like we talked about in TB. Even though our confidence reduced as you go from left to right, in terms of diagnosis, the advantage of this is that it's ease of detection. So it's easier to detect host-based antigen molecular than waiting for culture. And the time is also much faster. So we need to combine different methods and not just rely on one to make diagnosis. So there's a valley of death in diagnostic, and that's valley of death number one is development to commercialization. 
Valley of death number two is commercialization. You got the products, but how do you roll it out and get it sustained? That's a problem. That's why we, as a tiny telemycosis problem in the world, we need help in terms of funding and attentions. And we're very lucky to get NIH funding to develop a tropical medicine research center for telemycosis based in Ho Chi Minh City. But we collaborate extensively with partners around the regions, University of Hong Kong, Chiang Mai University, extensively in the region to try to advance a pipeline of diagnostics. So I'm going to tell you very briefly what we're doing so far in evaluating PCR-based assay, antigen detection assay by ELISA, antigen detection by LFA that we're developing in uh, collaboration with, with industry, and also developing host-based assay to really understand the early spectrum of disease that I talked about earlier. So very quickly, PCR-based is uh, based on the ribosomal DNA, which is very conserved for fungal um, pathogens. And that, there's many assays have been done, but the problem is it's very difficult to get DNA out of fungal cell. We try uh, to get uh, MP1P, which is a fungal antigen, um, encode for a protein outside of the um, fungal wall here. And anyway, we've gone a long way in the, the most recent assay that we have here performed very well. Out of 102 patients with culture-positive disease, the PCR detected 101, so only missed one case. And then of 36 cases without fungemia, in other words, they have disease in the bone marrow or some other compartment, this PCR detected in the blood can pick up 55%. So it's more sensitive than blood compartment, which is fantastic, sorry, in, in uh, uh, blood culture, which is fantastic. And this antigen detection assay that I'm going to tell you about is developed right here in Hong Kong by Professor Ki Yun and Jasper Chen, whom I'm going to be visiting this afternoon. They developed this uh, antigen test that we uh, evaluate with them, help them develop uh, commercially by a company in Beijing. And we validate this. I'm going to go very quick because I'm running out of time, as always, uh, is that the, uh, this is a nice prospective study enrolling people that come in the hospital with advanced HIV disease. And we did this antigen test on everybody alongside conventional diagnostic and follow them very diligently every month over six months for development of disease. And what we found is that the sensitivity is 97.5% compared to culture when the patient come in at 85%. This is culture in all specimens, so superior to culture in antigen. And this is only a few hours compared to culture taking days and weeks. Specificity in this highly immunocompromised people with multiple opportunistic infections, including other fungal infections, as you know, candida, histo, and crypto, the specificity is really high, 96.5. So that's really fantastic. Um, and what I want to draw your attention to is that this assay can be done in the urine with really nice sensitivity of 95% alone. So if you combine with the blood compartment, you can improve it to 97.5, as I said. But if you just do it in urine in the clinics, you don't need to even take blood. You, you really capture 95% of the case, which is fantastic. And the beauty about this is that you can detect it even before culture detection. So these are 12 patients who were antigen positive at enrollment, but culture negative. And we follow them over time. And they develop infections over 16 weeks here. So that tells you that antigen can detect disease early, very much like the stories of crypto, where you can screen them for antigen. And if they have antigen, you can probably treat them before culture turned positive. And I want to now talk about the uh, uh, validation in a screening cohort. And this is a new study that we presented at CROI this year. These are people who come in with or without symptoms with advanced HIV disease. And we did these triple fungal screening with crypto, histo, talomyces screening, TB screening, using gene expert directly in blood, and microathletic cultures, antigen detection for all three fungi. This is what we found very quickly. The burden is humongous. This is 
20% Aramaisis, 5% crypto, 3% histoplasmosis. We didn't even know that histoplasmosis exists in Vietnam until we did this study, uh, until we did the antigen test and, and implement fungal culture. So that's amazing. And TB and NTM is, is huge, as we already know. These are microbiology confirmed TM and NTM. Together, these five pathogens made up 55% of opportunistic infection in patients come in the hospital with these intensive screening strategy. Our patient, these are asymptomatic, in clinic, the collectively these pathogens make up 22%, so substantial. And even with early detection and give them antifungal therapy, mortality is substantial. If you look at cryptococcal meningitis, 42%, TB, histo, 30%, Talomyces is very good because now we're treating them with infotericin B instead of etoconazole. I have one more minute, so we're going to have to speed through this with me. So we need to develop point of care because we need to be able to have these tests available in the community, not waiting for when they come in the hospital. So you could do screen and treat strategy very similar to crypto. So there's three assays being developed. We're collaborating with IMI, who make the cryptococcal antigen test collaborating with multiple partners, and I wanted to show you here just very briefly. You don't need to see anything, but the RUC curve is very similar between the LFA point of care and the EIA, so very nice sensitivity and specificity. I'm going to skip this fancy assay now, and just want to say that if we can supply, apply these triple fungal screening method, shooting three birds with one stone. You take one blood sample, a urine sample, you do three fungal tests, and if they're positive, you can put them on preemptive antifungal therapy and prevent disease from developing from dissemination to overt clinical infections. We also are developing an interferon gamma assay to, uh, to really see who has been exposed to TM because we really don't know how many people in Southeast Asia have lurking latent infection of talomycosis. So this is really important assay that we are in the process of developing with very promising data. So in conclusion, uh, diagnosis antigen detection is highly accurate in diagnosing symptomatic disease. Urine is an excellent sample for antigen detection. qPCR, point of care diagnostics, a very promising tool and host-based diagnostics are needed to expand our understanding of disease spectrum. Right now, we only know the end spectrum. We really need to know how many people in the population have latent infection, much like TB. In terms of prevention, I think we can apply point-of-care diagnostic to screen people earlier in the game, not waiting for until they come in the hospital, so we can do the screen and treat strategy for disease prevention. It's a huge network of collaborators that we are working with now. We're expanding beyond Vietnam to Thailand, southern China, partner with industry, partner with policy to really implement these. We are small, but we are dynamite, and we're going to try to move the field forward for telemycosis. Thank you so much for your attention. <laughs>